So I've got a, an airplane in here and I'm doing a compression test on it. I'll just do a short video tutorial on how I do it. I do it according to AC4313, the way it's published in that book. So first thing you do is you take your, uh, you take all your spark plug leads off, pull one spark plug out, usually the easiest one to get at so that you can hook up a tester to it. And then uh, you want to make sure your gauge is accurate. So this is a compression tester. So I had it already set earlier, but basically this gauge, so you set it 80 pounds on the left gauge, the right hand gauge is reading a little high on this. So this is a, this is a, a selling airplane gauge. This one kind of cheats a little bit, telling you that it's a little better than it is, but, and so you could just subtract a couple of pounds on this to get an accurate reading. I think this thing got dropped on the floor once a while back. Anyway. So, I'm going to do it exactly by the book this time. I'll turn the pressure back to zero on that gauge. So, I've got a, an adapter screwed in number one cylinder on the top spark plug hole. I'm going to rotate the engine around in the direction of rotation. And uh, if this was a, uh, anything but a Mooney, you would hear an impulse coupling click about right there, about the uh, 7 o'clock position. So that you that'd make it easier to hand start it. It wouldn't clip your knuckles on the way by. So I just keep turning this around. And right about there, I could hear some air come out of my gauge. So I'm, and it's resisting, so I can feel that it's coming up on the, the compression stroke. So I'm going to bring it down close to top dead center, but do not go past. The instructions say that specifically. That they don't want you to go past top dead center for a compression test. Okay. So I'm going to hold that with my stomach and I'm going to hook up the gauge and I'm going to increase the pressure on the left side until it's got some tension. Move it, the propeller down a little further to hold it. I'm going to bring it up to 80 pounds on the left gauge. There's an orifice in here that uh, restricts the amount of flow going into the cylinder so you can get a relationship on the gauge. Okay, so I'm just about at top dead center. It's 80 over 80, so it's really about 80 over 78 on this cylinder right now. 60 is considered acceptable unless it's leaking out of the exhaust valve. If it's leaking, even at 70 and it's leaking out of the exhaust valve, I usually correct the problem because it's just going to burn the exhaust valve out. Anyway, after I get to that point, I just generally disconnect my gauge and then I go to the next cylinder. In this case, I'm just going to show you what I do on the next one because I don't increase the pressure slowly like they say to do it. I just go around to the next cylinder. So let's just do it on this cylinder again. So go around. There, I can hear it coming out of my gauge. I go down to the same spot, somewhere where I know it's close to top dead center. Sometimes you get two people to hold it. I do it by myself a lot. Just hook it up. It went fairly slow. The pressure built up and I hold it and I get the same reading. So you can unscrew that and wear out your regulator or you can just plug it in. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Anybody that wants to uh, learn how to do it the way they do an AC4313, that's how she's done.